Mark. Hard screen. Look at that. That was the middle of the first quarter, but it set a tone, and there we went. The Heat, by the way, are still very, very slim favorites to win the series at Caesars Sportsbook. The Celtics, as you see now, are a two-and-a-half-point favorite for Game 6. I can tell you that number was three just a few hours ago, so it's moved slightly in that direction as we continue the basketball conversation. Unfortunately, we just had technical issues with Jeff Van Gundy and couldn't get it to work out. We thank Jeff for some time this morning. We'll try and get it back in the next few days. In the meantime, Legs, I'll come to you on the same thought that I left it off with, with Jeff. The pressure now in so many ways mounts on Miami, and Jimmy Butler is downplaying that. He's saying all the right things because he's just terrific, but there isn't any question that there is pressure. Are there moves you can see them make? Suddenly things have turned against them so quickly. Is there an adjustment, a move, something like that you could see the Heat make that would try and turn things around in time for tomorrow night's Game 6 at home? Well, I think the biggest one, there's two for me. The first is I think you're going to have to start to look a little bit at the way that you're defending Jason Tatum. I thought last night, you know, he played a great game, very poised, patient, in control because he's seeing a lot of blitzes and double teams, but I don't think necessarily that these double teams have been super effective in terms of making Jason Tatum feel a hard blitz. They're more like a soft double team when he comes off, and it allows him to be able to pick you apart a little bit with his passing, and Jason Tatum is a good passer. He's not an elite level passer that should be able to beat you with his passing. He had 11 assists last night, and if you go look at the coverage, when he comes off these ball screens, he's not really feeling a lot of physicality or forcing him to do anything different with his handle. He's sort of stringing them out a little bit, reversing the ball, and now Boston is playing two on one or three on two on the weak side, and they're getting great shots. I think maybe you go to a little bit more straight coverage on him where either you hedge and go under, meet him on the other side with the original defender, or you fight over the top and see if you can force Jason Tatum you know, to have to put this team on his back a little bit with great shot making rather than giving him the best of both worlds, which I think some of these soft traps can do. And then also I think Jimmy Butler, his mentality early has to be more aggressive. I think it settles his team down. It gives the building energy when he gets it going early. It's easier said than done because Boston is an elite defensive team and they've got a lot of personnel to throw at him. But I think Jimmy Butler is key to have a great start offensively in game six as a scorer, be a little bit more hungry. And it's not just him, but Alan, you and I were talking about it earlier today. When the Heat don't play well frequently, I guess I can't say always, but frequently, one of the factors is that Bam Adebayo seems to practically disappear. Yeah, and then he has the last two games. I mean, it's like it's like after game three, he, he has completely disappeared from this series. And he called himself out after game four. So you expected him to have a big game in game five, but he was nowhere to be found. In fact, he actually played worse. Six turnovers, five of them in the paint. Now, you credit, obviously, what Boston was doing there. You see it right there. There's one great example of Al Horford coming over to help. The minute he puts the ball down, they jump on him. Here again, they're crowding around him. But that's also Bam. Bam's got to be tougher there. Bam's got to be strong with the basketball there. He has a tendency when you make him dribble to fumble it a lot. He's not great when it comes to controlling the basketball. But the other thing you noticed him missing in this game were little jump hooks that he normally can knock down. They need him to step up. This guy is an all-star player, and they are on the verge of getting to the NBA Finals. He's got to show up. We're going to talk about Jimmy Butler. We're going to always talk about playoff Jimmy. Playoff Jimmy was like playing Jimmy yesterday. <laughs> he really wasn't there either. But when you have one star that they're focused on, and you see here what they're doing against him, that's just a bad turnover. But he's facing length now. They are, throwing, they are throwing the bigs on him, whether it's Time Lord, whether it's Horford, and they're making him a jump shooter. So if they're doing that, Bam Adebayo has to say, okay, the paint's open, I got to eat. He did not look aggressive to me in this game that he wanted to take over. He so looked confused. What's happening is the better team is finally playing like the better team, which is going to force Alan Hahn to say three words. I'm not going to do this again. That I know he doesn't want to say. <laughs> not again. What are those three words, Alan? I'm not saying them yet. The, but, but I said them once on this show. You weren't here for it, but I said them for you. Uh huh. When you were you were right about a Lakers uh -huh. uh, sitting there, players thinking it's the Warriors. But the three words I'm that no one ever wants to speak aloud are Greeny was right. But like I tell you all the time, I am that rare genius who will not be fully appreciated until long <laughs> after my time. And so we will see.
our back has been against the wall. Obviously, we didn't imagine being in this position, being down 3-0. But, you know, when adversity hits, you get to see, like, what a team is really made of. And I think now it's a series. Well, there's ignorant belief. We do, we do believe um, at all times that, you know, if we still have a chance, everybody's counting us out. You know, the way we're supposed to win, we're supposed to be done. Relax. Anything can happen. So once again, not everyone was counting them out. If you've been watching this show, you know that I have been saying all week long that this graphic is going to change once and forevermore. Instead of the 0 and 150, it's going to be 1 and 150, just as a 16 would eventually knock off a 1 in the NCAA tournament. Eventually, the better team was going to fall down three games to none in a playoff series and come back to win. And that's what's happening here And Legs. I feel like you're kind of on my – I'm working on Alan Hahn here. He's going to have to say Greeny was right. I feel like you're kind of coming over to my side because the first three games of this series made very little sense to me. The last two have looked a lot more like what I think it should look like. That's not to disrespect Miami. Butler is phenomenal. Spolster is an incredible coach. But the Celtics are the best team in the league when they play like it. They just don't always play like it. Yeah, listen, I, I, look, I thought Boston would win the series going in. I certainly didn't think it was going to go this way. And when they got down 3-0, just, just mathematically, you're thinking, are they going to be able to do this four nights in a row? Or can Miami have just one game in the next four in which they outplay Boston? And then we're facing that situation now. It's going to have to happen in a game six. But this is that rare situation, Greeny, and this is what you've been alluding to, where a team that was clearly better in the regular season – falls down 3-0, right? This is a two seed in the Eastern Conference, and they are healthy. It's not like you can point to a key guy being out right now. They've got everybody at their disposal, and yet they fell down 3-0. So in that situation, if there ever are conditions that are right for something like this to happen, you are looking at it right now. And Boston, on both ends of the floor, has resembled the team that was the best team in the NBA in the first two and a half months of the year. And let's see what Miami can do now to disrupt that. All right. So, Alan, I feel like I'm winning you over my side. I know you don't want to say the words Greeny was right. I, I, know I don't that... want to jinx it for you. How about that? <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Right now, I, I'm not asking you about anything that has happened. If I said to you right now you have to pick who's going to win this series, who would you pick? I'm still picking Miami. You think they win just it tomorrow the night? Odds, the odds are in their favor just when you consider they are going home and that it's just one game they have to win, right? So the odds are still slightly, of course, in their favor, although ESPN's Basketball Power Index has it at 74% Celtics winning right. on the road. But I'm with you, and I'm, I, I, you were feeling the momentum switch, especially after they get the one win. And I started texting around friends of mine who are assistant coaches, scouts, front office people. Like, are you feeling it too? That's literally what I asked everybody. Like, it's one thing for us to see it. Right. But how about those who are with the trained eye? What are you seeing? Some of the reactions I got. At some point, one scout said, talent has to eventually beat Miami. Mm -hmm. That's one. The other one was, they are 200% playing better defense like flip the switch. Right. They have become their team. That's what they – they are now playing as the Celtics. And then last but not least is my own thoughts, too, that have been echoed by others. The Celtics' toughest opponent over the last two years has been the Celtics. Yep. They have made it – and their own players have said this. They have made it difficult for themselves. So when you ask about belief, they have that belief because it's not like – I know he called it uh, – was it ignorant belief, right? Yes. But it's not because they know what they're capable of. They know all they have to do is win two more games. They know they can. That's why you can believe that this can happen. So, let me go back to Legs because he's got some tape and no one does these tapes better than he does. Legler, I know that there are two things you're going to tell us Miami has to do much better if they, the Heat, are going to close this thing out tomorrow night at home. What are they? Yeah, all right. Well, first of all, let's talk about the three-point shooting. We, we have a lot in the way that this has flipped over these last couple of games, but specifically why this is happening. And here's what I'm talking about earlier, where the, these blitzes are not affecting Tatum, right? So he can still see. And by his ability to see the baseline, you freeze that backline defender. That means Bam Adebayo on the weak side has got to cover two guys. 
And it's all predicated on Tatum really not feeling any pressure when he comes off the ball screen. So that's first. Secondly, it's just effort. Look, Jason Tatum's not in a hurry. But when he sees Jimmy Butler or Bam out of bio jogging, he's going to advance the ball. And now three guys are behind it, which allows Marcus Smart to drive the ball hard at Struess. And Jalen Brown gets the easiest basket he gets all night. And that was early third quarter. It's a 17-point game. There is plenty of time to still make a run in that game. But you cannot get out hustled up the floor in a situation that's just an innocuous walk it up possession that leads to a dunk in transition. So that is strictly effort. And I can't wait until Eric Spolstra goes over that play with his team in a film session because that is not even close to good enough to be able to compete against a team like Boston when you're trying to make up a deficit. And they might find themselves in that situation in game six. So the three-point shooting, specifically how you guard Boston to allow, not allow some of these clean looks, and then just flat-out effort. Game six has to be skin on the floor, all hands on deck. We have to play harder than Boston. Yeah. Uh, to, to repeat a point that you made earlier, the Celtics are in theory, that not in theory, the Celtics are the better team and they're the healthier team. Uh, the Heat were playing last night without another important piece in Gabe Vincent, but as these playoffs have gone along, they've lost Tyler Hero, they've lost Victor Oladipo. All these are the reasons that we sort of felt like this momentum was, was, was possible and now here it comes and the Celtics go on the road where frankly they've been better than they've been at home. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.